What is going on guys? Dre here and welcome back to Besiege. Today we are going to be starting off checking out... Okay, I guess we're not. Never mind. Before these sheep rudely interrupted me, today we're going to be checking out the Z935 Cockroach RC car. And I've been driving around this thing for like 10 minutes now, and it's just so enjoyable. Uh, the suspension feels great. It's got a lot going with it, and we'll go into that later here. Oh, that one. Okay. Um, why does this not want to work with me? What just happened? All right, this time it's gonna go well. I actually wanted to see if we can maybe climb the mountain, though. You can see how small this thing is. It's adorable. I mean, we already saw it's about the size of a sheep, so pretty big in RC car standards. Oh, looks like we did. Oh, did I fix my wheel? Something definitely fell off, so that wheel's probably not doing too good. Yeah, we're having some wobbly problems here. I'm gonna have to reset this thing again, because I want to give it the best chance it can have to see if we can climb the good old mountain over here. And uh, I don't think it's going to be able to do it. It's just probably way too small. I just thought it'd be fun to try. My god, it looks so much bigger being that we're in such a little car. Okay, we're starting off strong. I can't even <laughs> I can't even get up to the flat part. I seriously have to be strategic at where I want to go up. Just this little small flat part. Like usually this is about the size of a wheel on our cars, so if it can do this, this would be amazing. I'm going to go full throttle, give it the best chance it can, and no, it's just, this is way too much for it. That's not to say this car isn't amazing, though, because it really is. It actually doesn't even need to climb, because we can do this, and oh my god. There we go. I made it to the top of the mountain, guys, so yes. Of course, this thing can fly as well. Now, I have no idea how I'm going to land this thing. I don't even know how to really fly it. I mean, it's working. Not very well, though. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, that's a bad idea. Okay, we're dead. But yes, as you can see, there's two rockets on the back of this thing. And with a press of a button, we can engage that. And it goes pretty damn fast. Yes! I threaded the needle. Man, I wish this thing was a little bit more sturdy. It does like to break a lot. Oh, that would have been amazing if we landed that. But that was a huge jump in RC standards. All right, let's actually take this thing off and fly it because this is just so freaking cool. So, yeah, we do. We can lean. I, I've been playing with the controls now a little bit. Uh, well, unfortunately, I don't think there's a camera on this, so I'm going to try my best to do all this at once. I really can't press my mouse, though. I only have so many hands, unfortunately. And in Besiege, you need, like, at least four hands, I find. Uh-oh. Did I? Oh. Okay. All right, I think I've gotten the hang of it now. Uh, you don't actually have to hold the gas down, which was what I was getting confused with. So, yeah, this thing works absolutely fantastic, as you can see. I wonder if we can do a loop with this thing. I don't know if it's going fast enough. What's our speed, actually, right now? Oh, 170? I, I thought we were going way slower than that. It's hard to tell, though. All right, going for a loop. Here we go. And... Okay, stalled it. That was... Okay, I guess? All right, let's see if we can land this thing, though. So this is going to be really hard to land. It is a little wobbly, as you can see. It's so small uh, that flying something of this size is never easy. So here we go. I'm going to try my best. I don't know if I should disengage the rockets or not. I don't think I should. Let's let's go for it. Nice and light, nice and light. Okay, okay, okay. Disengage, disengage. There we go. Coasting down. Damn it! That was actually not bad, but uh, I want to perfectly do it. All right, here we go. Going for a landing once again. I'm going to disengage the rockets early this time. There we go. We're doing it right now. And got it! Okay, so the, the secret to landing this one is you want to start spinning your wheels before you land, or it flips over, and I was having that issue a lot. But there we go. We did it. We can put away our wings and get back to being an ordinary RC car. Well, not really ordinary at all, if you really think about it. Oh, hey, that's not good. <laughs> God. And another piece of war history for you guys. This one is absolutely awesome. Look at this thing. The long dong of the 8.8 cm Flak 37 SFL. It's also called the Off Zugcraft Wagon 18T. There's a bunch of different names for it, but uh, it is really beautiful to look at. And we have a giant gun on it, as you can see. 
Now, this was mostly uh, an anti-tank weapon, and obviously with its size, you can see that. Now, we're on Hel Helm's Deep right now. This is a new Helm's Deep map. We have seen one Helm's Deep before. I thought it'd be fun to try and destroy it, though. It's actually remarkably similar to the other one, to the point where I think this might actually be the old model. Hard to say. People steal designs all the time. If it is a new one, my apologies. It looks amazing regardless. Okay, so... We're going to try and aim this thing up so we can totally control this, obviously. It is a gun after all. Oh, it had a little holder. I was wondering what was making it hard to move. But yeah, it's got a nice little uh, barrel holder in the front. All right. So let's put the gun sight on. And yes, this does have an aiming reticle, albeit not the best. It's actually... Well, how, how are you supposed to precisely aim this? Can we actually zoom in a little more? No, it looks like this is the only view that we get. So... I don't know even really where I should... I mean, I mean, I guess I could just put it in the middle and hope for the best. So, I'm gonna go for part of this wall over here. It's a little wobbly, as you can see, but not too bad. Alright, here we go. Ooh, did you see that? I think it shot, like, right upwards due to the recoil. Not sure if I saw that right, but we're obviously gonna have to either get a little bit closer or practice aiming this thing, because it's got a mind of its own. Okay, hopefully it's hard to miss this close. We're gonna go nice and slow. I want to actually follow the shot. You know what? Let's get out of this camera. It's always more fun to follow a cannonball. So, here we go. We're gonna shoot it and slowly wait for it. There it goes. Now, is it actually gonna damage this thing? It went right through it. That's the problem. It's going so fast, it doesn't even register. Maybe it's just Helm's Deep. Let's actually go somewhere else. All right, let's see if we can shoot down a blimp. Now, somewhere up here, I spawned in the auto blimp, so we should be able to... Where the heck? Where is it? Um, let me actually get out of this camera and actually look for it here. Did it... What? Where are you? Where do... Oh, you're way over there now. Okay, well, we have to turn all the way around. Okay, it was much higher than I thought, so looks like we can aim really high in this, so that's obviously nice, but we are not going to be the most accurate of shots. I put on infinite ammo for that reason. Let's see. Oh, my God. First shot! Yeah, there we go. That was such a good feeling. Oh, my God. I got to do it again. Okay, but I put it about twice as high in the air, so uh, this should be a little bit more challenging for us now. God, where the heck is it? It must be, like, right on top of me. I'm really good at doing that. Okay, so we can still clearly see it, but a little bit of a smaller target now. This aiming reticle actually, well, it worked well last time, so hopefully we can uh, do this again to try and stop the sway a little bit. It is a rocky boy, but that's okay. All right, this should be good here, I think. Let me just move it just a little bit that way, and boom goes the dynamite. There we go. First shot, first hit. That time we did not break it, though, as you can see, or we didn't explode it. I mean, we obviously broke it. There's pieces falling everywhere. It might fall out of the sky here, so I want to get a couple more shots off before that happens. Uh, I would love to explode it again, because there's nothing more enjoyable than watching something explode out of the sky. In a video game, of course. Don't, don't be sick. All right, there we go. Ah, uh, that was a bit high, I think. We'll see in a second here. Ooh, the re I wish the recoil wasn't so bad on the camera. All right, it looks like it's actually going upwards, because I didn't destroy it. So, it's lightening the load and going higher and higher. So, we got to get this thing down quick if we do want to successfully do it. That might be a good hit. Come on, man. Come on, man. Did I miss it? I can't believe I missed that. Yeah, it's almost out of viewing distance now. We got maybe one more shot to try. I really wish this wasn't so wobbly. There we go. That was a little bit to the right, I think. It might move into it, though. You never know. Come on, man. Yeah, it's just too far away at this point. There we go! That's what I wanted! Another beautiful explosion! So, yeah, safe to say this thing has a damn big gun on it, and it's actually more accurate than I expected. Look at the, look at the distance you, you can view up on this. It's said to be anti-tank, but I think it could easily be anti-air as well. I mean, clearly, we, we just took something out of the sky. Oh, I didn't realize like, I didn't unpin it. That's all right, though. We'll just do it now. So yeah, guys, that is the 8.8 CM Flak 37 SFL. Absolutely beast of a machine and uh, very fun to shoot. And moving on to the next design, this is the Incredimobile from Incredibles 2. Now, uh, this thing really isn't designed for the track, but I thought we'd uh, start it off with the track and uh, have some fun with this thing. I can tell you right away, it's definitely not a speed demon. We're going a stable 86 kilometers an hour. Yeah, don't really have to uh, break into these churns, I'll tell you that much. But it does have a speed boost, so let's try that out. Oh yes, with flames and all. 
puts it up to, uh, actually, it's going pretty damn fast, about double the speed, 168, 169, and I'm sliding all over the place now. This thing really isn't built with traction in mind. All right, but that's obviously not the coolest thing it can do. In the movie, it actually transforms into a boat, and you can actually do that in this game. There's, unfortunately, still no buoyancy in this game. One day it might happen, but if we go into boat mode here... Oh my god, look at all the transformations that happened. Uh, that was really impressive. It happened really quick. Let me go back to car, just so we can appreciate them. The uh, hood goes down. The wheels, they actually go up. How, how does it work? Oh my god, the back wheels are sideways. That's amazing. I love that. And then these things flip open as well, or I guess closed. Uh, but yeah, it looks a little better when you're actually driving it, because as you can see, uh, it's got water jets down there. So that is just so cool. And I think, I feel like we're going faster. We are going faster in boat mode than we do in car mode. Not the easiest to control. It's basically constantly drifting, but hey, it's kind of fun. So yeah, I love super speedy transformers, so this one is just awesome because it's instantaneous. You hardly even notice that it actually transforms when you go into boat mode. And I gotta say, design-wise, it, it screams Incredibles. I absolutely love it. And this is the runner from Generation Zero. I can't believe we already have a design from this very awesome game. If you don't know what Generation Zero is, uh, I did a video on an absolutely amazing game. Go check it out if you like basically weaponized war because uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, but yeah, this guy, obviously a walker in this game, a very high-tech walker too. Uh, it can actually turn and gallop. So if we press a button here, let me just get into the straight. Uh, he can turn on the fly from walking to, let's do it, there we go, galloping. That is probably very hard to do. I can't really say for myself because I've never built a walker, but that is amazing that you have two modes of speed on this thing, and it's, how fast are we going? God damn. 76 kilometers an hour, 78, 80 kilometers an hour in a walker. That is so damn fast, and we can actually go back to the ordinary mode, so let's walk. I kind of want to see how fast he goes on this mode too. Now he is, as you can see, very little friction on this thing. So let's just let it stop and let's start picking up speed now. So yeah, it looks like in walking form it goes about 20 kilometers an hour. So a big boost when you go into galloping mode. Uh, obviously, as you can see, this thing's weaponized as well. So let's get back to where some of the humans are and let's take them out in, you know, typical Generation Zero fashion. All right, here we are. Now I'm going to stop now because I know... <laughs> <laughs> this thing has no friction at all. So that that's the one downside. It'd be nice to have some friction pads on this. I'm sure it needs to be frictionless, though, in its design. Okay, so there we go. Let's go into the other mode so maybe we can actually walk a little bit. In this mode, it's not so bad, but when you're going fast, it's very hard to stop, obviously. All right, but you can turn on the searchlight, and it does have uh, the lighting in it, so it looks really, really nice. And obviously, with the minigun on top... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The minigun and besiege is the greatest thing ever. You know what? This could probably take down a castle. Let's go try. God, there is something seriously creepy about a dog robot. It reminds me of the Boston Tech robot with basically a minigun on top. And we're really not that far away from this thing possibly happening in real life. And that horrifies me. Uh, but yeah, let's see how quickly we can take down a castle with this thing. Oh, my God. I think that's the, the fastest we've ever taken it out. All thanks to a dog and his little minigun. Well, rather big minigun. So, yeah, we're going to wrap up this one here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed checking out another episode of the Best Besiege Creations. A lot of extremely unique designs this week. I had a blast playing with them. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching them as well. Now, as always, if you want to check out any of these designs for yourself, link me in the description. Go support the creators who do spend hours upon hours designing these awesome things because uh, they deserve it. So thank you so much for watching and liking, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.